Yeah. Speaking of Mick Hark is here, we're doing it at the bottom of St Magnus Lane, just across the Castle Yards here. No, Mick got into difficulties last year on Christmas Day. You, you couldn't have breathed, was that right, Mick? Aye, yeah. It was, uh, uh, was kind of tough going at Pearl Highly. Vacuum down the street, um, quite quickly off the street, and down into the lane here. And uh, down, down as far as, well, just behind me here, Walter. Uh -huh. And this is where the, probably the Dunies who had it, we had the session the whole way down the lane, and it's maybe the first kind of time in the game that the Lockheed's got into the game at sale. They were pushing back up the lane here, and of course, two teams pushing against each other, sticks in the middle here. And right from the start, when it got stuck, you can't. It was, it was a warm day, and um, the boys were really good. Water was coming in quickly for Falk. Um, at that time, I was on this side of the wall here. So the bar started moving back up the lane and I went, jumped over the wall over by there and came back into the game here and the bar was still steadily getting pushed, more squashed up, up to here and it was just this this, uh, this part of the wall here that I uh, I, I got into trouble lane. So you, you couldn't have breathed right, was that right Mike? Yeah, I mean? it just felt like, I mean, there was, in one minute there was plenty of room around me and then it's the tighter I got and the tighter I got it just felt like there was something pushing against the, um, the side of me here um, and I said it, um, I said to the boys in front of me I can't mind exactly who they were I can um, one was big stuff this is why I'm, I'm struggling here a bit by and uh, and it just kept on getting tight and I, I couldn't get like a right breath in it was just I was taking in pity breaths and, and then the pity breaths were even getting harder and that was just about here um, and I was quite aware of people around me saying oh boy in trouble here boy in trouble get a moot get a moot when when that was happening I couldn't get up so I thought about going down onto the ground to get some some air because it's well there's only feet down there there's no there's no um tight park down there and I mind stuff saying to me boy you're no going down there and he, he shouted harder and that's when the uh, kind of things started things started happening the boys got me out I don't really mind much about getting pulled out um, and so they, well, they were hauling you <laughs> they were lifting you well whatever they do whatever so they, they do well, they, they, they took you over up here up onto the car park and they, they you got put down on the ground up here uh -huh. And then, well, an ambulance came. Do you mind on about that? I don't really. Mind. I vaguely remember, um, like the commotion. There's a lot, so you could hear feet moving and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I mind, um, mind Charlie Curry over me, and he was say, uh, I kind of, I remember his, hearing his voice over everybody else's voice. He was like the most prominent one there. It was, it was obviously. Obviously, there's something that just wasn't uh -huh. right. We kind of weren't happy with, with the situation I was in. So, but I, I do mind Charlie Curry's say uh, voice louder than anybody's, and I think he was like right doing at me when I was lying. Well, obviously on the ground. Well, an ambulance was called for you. Do you mind being in the ambulance? I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind. I mind getting out of the ambulance at the at the hospital. At the hospital, alright. I right. don't really mind. Get into the hospital, mm -hmm. and it's just. And when you're in the hospital, did you eventually come round? Or, uh, what happened there? Oh yes, I, I came round in the hospital. And uh, were they giving you oxygen and that? They had me um, on oxygen and then a drip and all. Um, I was on a, well, I was on oxygen the whole night and um, a couple of drips you can just for um, get liquids back in you because well, anybody that plays the game can see you sweating out that much liquid and they're wanting to get it back in this into you to make you as well as can be again. So then, it would have been the next day you got out, was it? I mean, uh, five o'clock at night, I got out, like, the, um, the next night. I was in the whole Christmas night, and the whole of the next day, and then got out at night then. And then, did you watch yourself then on the DVD? Did you see yeah, that? I got through. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> I, I watched it, and uh, it makes kind of frightening um, footage, really. You can... When you see things like that happen, then you think, oh, that's a wee bit of touch and go, but then... 
the spur of the moment, it's... Um, yeah, there was a lot of cooperation shown for the players to, to haul you and get you when they that, noticed you're in trouble. That is that is the biggest thing. Um, over the years, there's been a lot of injuries in the bar, but there's always been good communication between the two teams. Yeah. Oppies and Doonies sometimes don't get on on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. The rest of the year, they're, they're the best friends, they're neighbours, they're workmates. Um, but if you anything was going to happen, the Doonies, probably more Oppies would have pulled me out than Doonies. Mm -hmm. The Doonies want you in there to help them, the Oppies want you out there, so if they can get you out, the better. <laughs> you know, there is good cooperation between Yeah, that was good cooperation, Sean. And, and get everybody out, and get them up. The yeah, there was a half a dozen players, I think, altogether that was left to do that There day. was a good few boys came out before me, um, yeah. over there. Um, but even boys getting in water, you can, the, um, the one team's no higher in water, but the dreams. They're it's all. a very fair game, yeah. really. Right. I'm just doing with Mick now, doing at the fire station. On the 15th of June this year, there was a sponsored event going on, Mick, was it? Aye, we're doing a sponsored ladder climb um, for local hospital, the Walford Hospital, for a... Um, a lamp for the like kids with chondis and all and 20 of us took part in it down here and we were climbing the, the, the tower there with a ladder up and a ladder down and it took 4 hours and 20 odd minutes for everybody that was taking part there was 20 of us just got up and down and up and down um, on that day and uh, after, I've, after I'd finished the, the ladder climb I was going in to the lecture room and to get me caught to get a photo taken and uh, I was coming through the door here and well I uh, don't mind a big lot after that because well I had a heart attack on that day um, and I fell on the ground here since it's all happened I've found out exactly um, what's cost it and all that things um, but when I hit the ground then the boys at the fire station here and the district office turned me over and uh, they started CPR on me right away. That's pushing you? That's uh, chest compressions uh -huh. and, and well, mouth to mouth. And, um, oh yeah. Um, they started on me right there. Somebody else phoned an ambulance and thankfully the ambulance wasn't used anywhere else. It was just two minutes around the corner. They came here and uh, well, connected me up to the defibrillator and shocked me back, back into, into go again. Took me up to the hospital. I was in the hospital for about um, 10 days at the Balfour and then I was taken to Aberdeen and I got a triple bypass. Triple um, bypass in Aberdeen. Was that a triple bypass operation? Yeah, um, there was three blockages that they needed to, um, three blockages and arteries that they, they bypassed, which was a major operation and uh, then they fitted this um, thing called a um, implantable cardio defibrillator um, and it's if my heart goes over 200 beats a minute again, it'll sh stop it and start it. So, um, so that's it's, inside you know? It's it's in, in here, just in this in this muscle here, uh -huh. which is a, a wee machine. And uh, it just monitors me the whole time and, and shocks me if it needs to. But having that implanted means uh, I can't do one of the things I would like to do, and that's playing the game. So you can no longer play in the bar at all? I don't know. Um, any contact sport whatsoever, whether it be um, football, rugby, um, the bar, I suppose they look at as a contact sport, so my days of that are are, do, are over. And you're, you're still off work at the moment too, are I'm you? I'm off work now, yeah. Um, I'm hoping to go back in January. Um, I can't drive till January um, because of this thing that was implanted. You can't drive for six months. So come come January, I'll hopefully get back to work, get driving again, and uh, see you. Yeah, and you're hoping to get back here too at the, at the fire service. I'm back here training on a Tuesday night, just doing light duties, um, and I just have the I've done me stuff up at the hospital now, and phone the occupational health ones for the fire brigade, and get a fitness testing set up with them, and then hopefully get back. Fighting fire. So you'll be back trying to save lives then? By January, hopefully, yes. Right, good for you, Mick. Right, thanks for Thank that. You. I'm just here with Mick eh, outside this computer shop. Did you see that on the DVD, Mick? The bag up on top of the roof? I saw that, yeah. Um, quite spectacular, I thought, when I, I first was, seen it. It was quite exciting at the time. Yeah, I um, thought when I first seen it, I thought, hey, that looks quite, quite good. Good for folk at home sitting and seeing that. But then, as a safety part of it, 
maybe not so good. You're not going to stop people going up on roofs. People are going to go up there, whether it's spectators to get a, a better view. But um, I thought maybe too, too many bar players up there. Yeah, there was, there was too many up there for the, it's just a felt roof and it's a flat roof I mean, and it's, there was too many. When you're putting bars up on roofs and things, it's to smuggle it. Yeah. And to smuggle it, you want to get it away quickly. No, no take the bar up onto the roof. But to throw it up there, have two boys up there even that's going to throw it somewhere else. Maybe even back down the street, but no to fight but, up on the roof. But fortunately, nobody was hurt. We just learned a lesson. That's the main thing. You can, the bar is going to, you can't stop the bar gun where it's going to go. People pick the bar for a, a short moment like that in time that it could land anywhere, but to try and keep as little of people up there as possible would, would certainly benefit the game itself. Yeah, too many on top of the roof. Right, thanks. I'm just doing with Mick here, doing it the Man's Lane. On Christmas 2004, the, the Doonies got a break uh, at the last minute there on Main Street. You got the ball over Gerding and came over here to this Gerding and Doonies had it, was it Mick? Aye, yeah. Um, the bar um, broke loose on, on the main street at Stale and uh, everybody, well no everybody, people scattered right left and centre and running here there and everywhere. I came up around um, the, in between the houses here to here and there was two or three um, bar players here already just obviously waiting to see if there was going to be a smuggler or whatever and uh, I came to just to this side of the tree and just at the gate there, the, the bar came through there. Um, Dooney's in possession of it. Um, uh, at the time, I think it was Davy Miller that had it that came through the garden with it. And then there's, he was followed obviously by other Dooney's, but up his wheel. Came in this garden here, and uh, there was up his on the wall here that jumped into the garden. The bar was loose in the garden just for a matter of seconds, but when I, sh I shout to Dooney them, it fired over the wall and it came over. So it just it came over here, away. Came over the wall here, landed just a bit, well, not a bit feet, but just by here. And it was, say, uh, awful snowy. It was uh, white as can be that day. So I picked the bar up for there. And I ran along here. Thinking, that's the best place to go with it. And uh, that was a lot of snow that day. It was awful snow. It was a good few inches yeah, deep in the um, snow. It was awful sliding. It had been parked tight too. You can the snow. And I, you tried to go up there. If I get up there and get into where Harry Kerr's um, field, there's a field next to Harry Kerr's shop. I thought, right, if I get in there, I can either hide or else get up to the top. And there's a lane at the top of the field that I could get out. And you're you're up the Dundas Crescent. You could go anywhere really. Up the, the, well, just before the junction there, and uh, as I say, it was hard on the feet, but I could, I could tell there was fault behind me, running after behind me, and next to Ken, somebody just take my feet from underneath me. But, but you no, got I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly what was it. You don't know who tackled you? No, but the bar um, broke loose for me. Um, right, when I had to run, the bar spilled. I went into the kind of driveway where that cares are there, and two or three other boys. Started gathering round then, and it obviously didn't take long for everybody to came to the bar was here. Came so back down this road, and by the time we got to about here, it was probably most of the players were back, back. in the game again. So then it could then it get down that way, yeah, then went right down Man's Road. road. Can, uh -huh. That's a different route it would normally just, take anyway. Oh, yeah. Then the yeah. uh, Hoosers and Gerdings and that here. But yeah, it's shows where it can go, you can if you're if you get another wall or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, that was unlucky, Mick. You nearly had a chance of getting away with it there. Well, you have to try these things. <laughs> right, thanks for that. I'm just speaking to Davy Sinkler. Davy's a boys' bar winner and a men's bar winner. He won a, a boys' bar on New Year's Day in 1961. Is that right, Davy? Yes, that's correct. And you, you, um, you got that one down in the water. Yes. Push down, was it? Push, push from Ross Street. It lasted about. Uh, Thrown up at 10 o'clock and it finished at about uh, quarter to one. And what, was there a, a sort of fight for it, the bar? Were you quite unanimous or no, winner? I was a unanimous winner for that one. And uh, well, there's the bar there. It was a bar that was donated by a, a Mrs. A. Rosie. It was an old bar that was played again. It, it's they written on it there, presented by a Mrs. A. Rosie, St. Carson's place. So it was an old bar that was 
we played again. Then did she throw it up as well? Too? Did, did she throw it up as a family? I can't remember at the moment who threw this bar. Uh -huh. And uh, this one. Can, and, and this one here, is this the mains bar? No. The uppies were on their way up, uh, up Victoria Street on that day and, and the, the Doonies uh, smuggled it away. And they got it away uh, doing Fraser's clothes, is that right Debbie? That's correct. And you yeah. came about hands then? I came about hands then. Uh, the right non Donison, Donison came out of Fraser's clothes, chased by Duncan Curry and threw the ball to me and I disappeared. Uh, then they're doing Great Western Road and that was it. So you, you, you made off with a bar in your head? I made off with the bar and it was a smuggle that day and I kept the bar. That Good. Was the story. Good for you. Well, well, thank you very much for that, Debbie. Just had the two bars up there so we can just get a good picture of the... We are Debbie Sinclair with his boys bar and his mains bar. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just in a uh, Scott's shoe shop here in Victoria Street. And there's uh, Sammy Tullock. Sammy won the boys bar on New Year's Day in 1971. And that was a bar that was thrown up by Josie Robinson. You mind that day, Josie? Oh, fine, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long did the bar take in them days? Oh, so maybe roughly around an hour or something. Was that? Yeah. How long did it? How long did that one take, Sam? Uh, about twenty-five to thirty minutes at the most. Was that? Was there a bit of running in it? Ah, oh, we were running, aye. And what about at the end? Was there a bit of fight for the bar then? Or? No, well, there was, wasn't that many takers in the days, but uh, so you're there, quite, was a, there was a couple, but it didn't come to nothing. You're quite unanimous. Well, there was nobody else getting it. All right, so you you <laughs> you won it anyway, and it. and that that bar, Josie, that was uh, thrown up at. Half past ten, was that right? That was the first bar to be thrown up at half past ten. They changed it to ten o'clock at half past ten. You threw up the the, the nineteen seventy one boys bar, and now you're throwing up the Christmas Day two thousand and eight men's bar. That's right. And that's that's going to be in the record books as the first player that's no one about to throw up two bars. Is that right, Josie? That's right indeed. So you'll be looking forward to Christmas Day. Oh, very much indeed. And uh, 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 it's a, a a good honour to get to throw up a bar. It is indeed a very big honour, right enough. So you'll be looking forward to it? I certainly am. Right, well, thanks very much for that. Then just put the two bars in there together and we'll get you in. That's the uh, boys' bar and the men's oh, bar. Oh, 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 oh